Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you. My name is Mike Kwashira and this is Unplugged and this is where we give artists an opportunity to come and talk to us about their musical journey and of course the projects that they're working on. And I'm very excited today to have Kenya's own adopted son, <laughs> Gilad Milo, who's here with us with a fraction of the Super 8 band. <laughs> Gilad, welcome to Unplugged. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Really good to have you here. Thanks, Mike. And um, I want you to start by performing a song for so us. Sour. What did you do sing? It. Okay. Just a kawaii guy. Who can you, Lisa? I won't tell you. I'm shy. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. Me symptoms suffer, but I know. Everywhere I go, my shabiki wanani ita rosa fi and I. I'm just a kawaii guy. Who can you, Lisa? I won't tell you no lie. I believe a moja we could touch the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Moja, we could touch the sky. You and I. Just a kawaii, the guy. And he's, uh, of course. Not just a Kawaida guy. Kawaida guy. Oh, man. Kawaida guy, Kabisa. Yes, Gilad Milo, yeah, please join me here <laughs> on, the, at, on the desk. Thank you. you. Thank you, you so jokes? much. Uh, of course, I got jokes. All the time, <laughs> Gilad, you know, you know. Speaking of jokes, okay. please start with the one about the Pope and the Rabbi. <laughs> I'm trying to think. The Pope and the Rabbi. So, what? Yeah. That's a long joke. You have your little joke. I have the time for that. the Pope and the rabbi. The, the rabbi goes to visit the Pope yes. in the Vatican. Yes. Well, I haven't told this in years. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the Pope has a golden phone next to him. Yeah. And the rabbi says to him, what's that for? Yeah. He says, for speaking to the Lord. Yeah. He says, can I speak to him? He says, sure. Uh, rabbi speaks for about two hours. Yeah. No, sorry, the rabbi speaks for about 20 minutes. Yeah. Hangs up and he says to the Pope, do I owe you anything? Yeah. Pope says, you know, 20 minutes, $20,000. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. A few years later, the Pope came to Jerusalem. And next to the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, the western wall of the temple, is this rabbi's office. And uh, the Pope walks in to say hello. And he sees the, under a bunch of holy books, he sees this old dusty phone. And he says to the rabbi, what's that for? Yeah. He says, for speaking to the Lord. Yeah. He says, can I speak to him? Sure. Pope picks up and talks for like three hours. Hangs up, he says to the rabbi, what do I owe you, three hours? He says, ah, it's nothing, it's a couple of dollars. He says, a couple of dollars, I spoke for three hours. He says, yeah, but this is Jerusalem, it's a local call. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Gilad Milo here with us. On a boy from Jerusalem. Boy from Jerusalem. Yeah, man. And, and uh, first of all, Happy New Year to you. Thank happy you. And to you. Yeah. And to everyone watching. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We had a rough one, the one before. This one hopefully will be better, huh? Yeah. All right. And, and, and before we come to that, uh, we've got Francis here from Trademark. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. 
Thank you very much. And so you see we've got a special guest here. Gilad is yeah. here with, uh, you know, a quarter, not even a quarter, like that's a fraction of super band. <laughs> yeah. What cocktails can you make for us? Uh, I'm having a selection of very cocktails today. Yeah. I'll be doing the Boy Scout Old Fashion. Yeah. I am Groot. And uh, one possibly uh, non-alcoholic cocktail, yeah. depending on what you want. Okay. Bring yeah. the non-alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Yeah. You do your thing. And I know that uh, you have uh, a new menu that you have there. Yeah, we got a new menu rolling in for Valentine's. Right. Yeah, for drinks, yeah. yeah. We have like four selections of drinks. Yeah. Yeah, rolling out on 14th of February. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you'll tell us more about where we can find you yeah, and yeah. some of the things that we can experience once great, we great. get there. Perfect. All right, so we're here with Gilad. Gilad, you started music in uh, a Jewish boys' choir when you were six. Wow, you've done your homework, <laughs> huh? <laughs> when, when, when you were six. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when, when, when you were there, you, you know, you, you'd get... Uh, parts of psalms and then yes, come home yes, so you yes. brought religion sort of you sort of it's brought true. that home it's true right? i come from a relatively secular family yeah uh and i was going to a jewish school in london my dad was a diplomat so i was going mm. to a school there and uh this the music teacher who was a rabbi yeah um picked up on my voice and said you know i'm also the choir master right for uh the london school of jewish song which mm -hmm. is a very very famous jewish boys choir yeah. And he brought me in. I was seven years old, eight years old. Mm. Uh, six was like when he met. And mm. those were the years that I sang along. Yeah. And, and I fell in love with the music of the religion yeah. and brought it home. Yeah. True story. And yeah, I mean, you, you continued your musical journey. Even in high school, you had a band. Yep. Later on, you had a band. What kind of music were you doing with White Donkey? <laughs> rock, rock, Jerusalem rock. Yeah. Jerusalem, in Israel, Jerusalem rock is very famous. Mm. And the best rock bands have come from Jerusalem. Mm. If there are any Israelis watching who are not from Jerusalem, they would argue with me. Yeah. But the best rock bands come from Jerusalem. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, we came together and, and we made hardcore, hardcore mm. rock, um, even bordering on punk. Mm -hmm. um, I used to wear black leather pants, yeah. earrings and all that was the same. I had a lot more hair yeah. back then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, um, and, and it was all about messages. It right. was all about anti-politics. Mm. When we were 20 something years old, that's yeah. the age where you're revolutionary and right. you want to bring change and all that. Right. So anti-establishment mm. and a lot of about religion. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. And we loved it. I mean, I really enjoyed it. And, and you know, when I hear you sing, there's a certain raspiness in your voice mm -hmm. that is very reminiscent mm. of people like Brian Adams and, um, you know, Michael Bolton and, you know, singers that era. Less but, Michael but, Bolton, yeah. but Brian Adams, definitely Sting. Yeah, yeah and Sting, uh, right. And Joe Cocker. Yeah. That's the music I grew up on. Yeah. 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 So, cool. so, so when I hear you, I'm like, ah, yes, yes, yes. You know, it brings yeah, back yeah. some fond memories. Single male vocalist who, yeah. a lot of love songs there. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I grew up big fan of the police and sting mm. yeah uh, i was a big fan of you know in my late teens of brian adams as well mm. yeah rod and, stewart and you worked in a cd store at some point were yeah. these some of the yeah, songs yeah, that you yeah. were you know when i was i mean there was in a shopping mall like the biggest shopping mall in jerusalem yeah and when i was when it was me opening the store mm. so it's like you open the store at 7 a.m right and the first thing you have to do is wash mop the floor yeah right from from yesterday yeah so i'm mopping the floor so you get to play your music yeah so i would play like blast nirvana mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and and everybody knew that it was my day at the store because mm -hmm. I was playing my music. Yeah, you know, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, yeah and I would like shake up the entire mall until yeah. it opened. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. you have to turn it down. But yeah. yeah, I mean, that was the the fun part of working in that store. Yeah. was that you got to choose the music that you played, and you had to choose from everything. Yeah, yeah. And of course, remember, you know, we're here with Gilad, so any questions that you have for him, you can shoot them to us using the hashtag the K 24 But also the WhatsApp number is on the screen right now. Uh, let us know what you think about our adopted son here in Kenya. And uh, we'll read your thoughts and messages. But before Gilad was Gilad, he was called the Golden Goose. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, uh, I worked as a bellboy at the Hyatt in Jerusalem during yeah. university days to pay the bills. Yeah. And I was, I was really good. Like I wouldn't, if you came in as a guest yeah. and I was carrying like your suitcase to the room, yeah. I'm not leaving you alone until I get paid. You get yeah. something. Well, yeah. I would not. So how would you do it? I would, I mean, if you, I mean, a lot of people just know that they're supposed to give a tip yeah. and you live on tips. The whole money, I mean, the salary was very low right. and you make your money off tips. Mm -hmm. So some people are like, they know that they're supposed to give you. So you get mm -hmm. to the room, give the suitcases, they give you a tip. Mm -hmm. But the ones who wouldn't, mm -hmm. 
I would open the window and give them a lecture about Jerusalem. <laughs> and if they didn't give a tip, I would turn on the TV and channel by channel, this is channel one, this is channel two. So basically they were paying you to go away. Uh, yes, 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 yes. yes. But, I, but I mean, I mean, but I had, like, I, the first, it was like my second guy that I took to the room. Right. And he had like this tiny briefcase. Mm -hmm. and he gave me a hundred dollar bill. Wow. Yeah, and I came back to the Red Bellboys. I was like, bro, yeah. this is me now. Yeah, this is how you And they it. named me like, you're like yeah. the golden goose. Yeah. yeah, this is the guy who goes and gets yeah. it done. He yeah. doesn't come yeah. back. And then, so then you went into the military, mm -hmm. you know, for a while. Yep. But then now, 96, 97, I think, was when you first came to Kenya, right? I came to Kenya backpacking with my then girlfriend. We yeah. got married after we came back from here. And you proposed uh, here in Kenya? No, I proposed no. as soon as we landed back. All right. Um, but it, like, I was thinking about it while yeah. we were here. Yeah, yeah. the atmosphere here. But yeah, we were here in 96 as backpackers. Yeah. Um, and, and you guys came and, you know, like, so a lot of us, you know, when we hear about some of the things you did when you came, right? Yeah. 1997, you were in Nakuru, you were in Lamu, you I were in Kakamega, in Kakamega Forest. forest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never been to Kakamega yeah. Forest. You know, I just hear about that. I've been to places I, Kenyans haven't seen I, in this I know, country. you know, that's the interesting For thing, sure. you know, like, For so, sure. so, so you have more of an experience of Kenya than even Kenyans who live here. I've been, you know, a lot, I've, I've met a lot of Kenyans who tell, tell me how they haven't traveled. Mm. It was really nice to see in the last year mm. that Masai Mara finally got real Kenyan yes. tourists. Yes. And so that's changing. Yeah. But it wasn't like that in the past. In the mm. past, you, you'd only see Wazungus, you know, mm. in Masai Mara. Mm. Today, and in the last, like, round of the, the uh, migration, mm. it was almost completely Kenyans, which mm. was awesome. Finally, Kenyans are enjoying yeah. their own country. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of so many beautiful places in this country. No, there, 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 there really is. There really yeah. is. And then, so you went into, you know, uh, you, you studied political science. Yeah. And was the fact that your dad was in the foreign service, did that influence your decision about what you wanted to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I studied political science mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted to be a diplomat. That right. was the thinking. Mm -hmm. um, only later I learned that they, they were actually looking for people who studied economy right. and people who had done uh, like a second career. Mm. So I didn't get accepted the first time mm -hmm. trying to get in. Yeah. So nepotism's out the window. Yeah, yeah I didn't. Um, <laughs> but my dad is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't help. It didn't help. It didn't help. Uh, um, so what I did was I went to work for the news. Yeah. And while I worked for the news for Channel 2 in Israel, mm. um, I really like, I was working the foreign desk, so I got to see like the world mm. through, uh, through the news, right. which really helped me the second time when I tried to get mm. in. Yeah. Yeah. Then I got accepted. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, your late dad, rest in peace, mm -hmm. was, was, was a very humble person. Sana. And, and, Sana. and you know, when I see Gilad, I think about, you know, did, did that humility pass on to you? Because it seems like it's something that you really took from him. It's just the way we are at home. Mm. You know, none of us are like shiny, flashy, flashy. I know a few that. guys. No, I mean, in my family at least, yeah. I mean, the way we are at home, we're, yeah. we're four brothers. We're four brothers, yeah. And if you meet all of them, mm. pretty much all of us are kind of the same. Right. We all do different things. My big mm. brother's a businessman and mm. uh, my younger brother's a musician. Mm. Um, but all are like, you know, we're just people, you know, yeah. Kawaida guys, yeah. you know, just, just like that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're still here with Gilad, and of course we want your, you know, whatever it is that you want to ask him, you can let us know. And using the hashtag TheLoopK24, and of course the WhatsApp number is on the screen right now. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk to him uh, a bit more. But I want you to perform another song for us. What, okay. what are you going to perform? I think we go back to where it started, yeah. and that's Unajua. Okay, let's yeah. do it, let's do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gilad Milo here with us on Unplugged. And Unajua, this is the song that uh, launched him here, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Sema, mpenzi ya yube, unaendale aje, amani aje, yeah. Sema, mpenzi ya yupe, umeputi ya wapi, umefanya nini na nani, unajua. Ati baby, it's cold outside, mpenzi won't you come inside, you don't have to hide your love, unajua. I see, baby, I'm your guy. Mpenzi, put your pride aside. You don't have to hide your love, Simba. Mpenzi, yeah, you girl. I'm ready, I'm Aisha. 
I miss you, my teacher. Yeah, Simma. Friends, yeah, you been. Women put in a rapi. Women find your nini, na na ni. Una juwa, Simma, Aje. I see baby's cold outside. Benzy, won't you come inside? You don't have to hide your love. We let you ride. I see, baby, I'm your guy. Benzy, put your pride aside. You don't have to hide your love. We mission that your baby, now that you're with him. You're not here, not cool, he tied you. I'm used to it, you know, ni me ku miss ni taku penda mi lele. Even though I'm not around you, there'll always be room for you right here, kwa roho yangu. Una jua. I see, baby, it's cold outside. Benzi, won't you come inside? You don't have to hide your love. Shout out my sister Wendy Kimani who might be watching us from Amsterdam. Okay. See for something else, Gilad. We can't waste yeah, you. You can't, you, you can't be here and we yeah. waste you like that. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. This is my pensy. Aha. And meanwhile, let me also make sure that Gilad's drink is ready. Gilad's <laughs> <laughs> Wow. When I started Superband. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, when you give love, you get love. So he's given us a lot of love here. Let's give him some love back. And and Francis uh, from Hero Bar at Trade Bar Hotel, which is on the ninth floor, yeah, yeah. is here with us today yeah. and is mixing some cocktails for us. Amazing. Uh, and uh, so, w what is this you're making? Uh, now this one is called the Gillard Special. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Produce it right now. Right. Right. Yes. Uh, that's what we are made of at Hero Restaurant. Uh -huh. Creati creativity, creativity, creativity. Yeah. On the spot. And I like this, you know. So yeah. you've got a superhero figure here. This is Iron Man. Yeah, there's Iron Man. Uh, what's the significance of the superhero to Hero Bar? It, re it represents all the hero aspects of yeah. our restaurant. Yeah. That's what we've made of. Yeah. Hero is the story of a villain, sidekick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, and all that sort of thing. Uh, all sort of things. Okay. And then um, you have a special menu that you have for Valentine's Day, which is coming up. Yeah, and yeah. I hope Gilad will have a special song for Valentine's that he can uh, do for us as, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as, as we go through to that. Sure, sure. But so, so what can we expect? If I came to Hero Bar, yeah. Trademark Hotel, yeah. ninth floor, yeah. on Valentine's Day, what would I expect? Uh, we're having five drinks right. already. We did a testing today mm -hmm. for the five drinks, but we'll be exposed to the public on 14th of February. Mm -hmm. We're having one, uh, which is uh, two, two actually, mm -hmm. tequila-based cocktails. Mm -hmm. Other one is uh, whiskey mm -hmm. and uh, Amarula. Mm -hmm. The other one, two of them is a champagne. And the other one also a vodka based cocktail. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. lots, there's lots, lots to get through lots, there. Lots, lots, lots uh, for the lovebirds, yeah? Right. Whoever is watching at home, uh -huh. you know, the lovebirds have everything. And you, and you have a really cool best. menu. Yeah. It's, um, a, it's like, a, it's like so, a comic book. So, yeah. so I, 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 don't know, I don't know if uh, the camera can get this, yeah. but this is uh, 59 ways to kill hunger. <laughs> what, what, what is that about? Okay. Um, so, uh, at Hero Restaurant, as, as I told you, yeah? We have a selection of items yeah. from the drinks, from the foods, yeah. everything. From the, you see, here is a, a Peruvian stroke Japanese restaurant. Right. Our drinks are executive. The foods from the sushi to the. Itashibisha. It's not those, 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 those two quantities. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah. 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 And so you have our drinks ready. I think Gilad, we can. Uh, we go back here. Yeah, let's let's, let's go okay, back okay. here. Take a, a short break. Have uh, have our cocktails. Continue this conversation. Okay. When I call Francis and Aiza. All right. So you know when you started music, you were doing a lot of covers with Calabash. Yeah. 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 Is, is is that how you met Wendy? Yes. Uh, mm. We were. I was playing with Calabash. I mean, it was a couple of years before Wendy joined. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I started singing, and then at some point I started singing uh, Swahili cover songs. Right. Ali Kiba, yes. Kidum, Giuliani, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Then Wendy joined the band, and right from the get-go, we had this awesome chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still really good friends. I mean, we literally talked today. She called mm -hmm. from Holland today mm -hmm. to say, how's it going? And, right. uh, you know, to ask me about family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So... How did the idea for Unajua come up? Because... I wrote Unajua completely alone... Um, and it was actually a mistake, that's the truth of it, mm -hmm. which is, I, fi I thought I'd finish the song. Right. It, wasn't a, it wasn't supposed to be a collab. Mm -hmm. And I went back to uh, where we were performing, mm -hmm. and, and I met Wendy, and I said, mm -hmm. do me a favor, come into the studio and sing mm -hmm. um, backup vocals. Right. Except she missed the backup vocals part. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So the next weekend, she comes with her notebook and these amazing lyrics. A totally different song. Yeah, no, yeah. but she had written this, this, I mean, you know, Wendy's lyrics yeah, in the song yeah. are incredible. Yes. Yeah? yeah? And when I saw the lyrics, I was like, okay, we can't pass this up. Yeah. So I went to MG, who was the producer of the song. I said, mm. what do we do? Mm. He said, bro, it's 2015. We yeah. open up the song and she records. So we went yeah. to studio and I didn't record again. Only mm. Wendy came in and recorded mm. her verse yeah. and all the ad-libs and all that stuff. Yeah. And that was it. And then we sat on the song for like six months because mm -hmm. um, she got married and went to Holland. Mm -hmm. um, and we kept thinking she'll come back and we'll make the video, but she wasn't coming back. Mm. And then I flew through Holland. I was on a speaking trip in the States, mm. flew through Holland. And I said, what do we do? She said, let's just release the audio. And I came back to Kenya and mm. released the audio. Yeah. And the country kind of went nuts mm. uh, for about three months. Mm. It was number one on the charts. It was yeah. everywhere. Guys were calling me from Nakumat. I can hear yeah. you yeah. playing in the background. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then we decided to make the video um, with Wendy in Holland. So mm. if you look at the video, you see that we're actually never together. Yes. yes. So yeah, so we yeah. recorded with Wendy in Holland. Another great song was Nakuaidi uh, with, with Della. Uh, with, with yeah, Della. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, you must have heard her when she did Hello and you were like, you were That's blown what away completely. That's what happened. Right? I, yeah. I heard Della sing uh, mm. Adele's Hello, her cover mm. in Swahili. Um, 
hello ni mi mi you know mm -hmm. what i mean and it was yeah. like Andela has that voice yeah. which is just like wendy they're they're both like mandy. massive yeah. Yeah. I, I call them um, mariah and whitney of kenya mm -hmm. which is Della and wendy yeah yes. and and um so i kind of stalked Della, yeah and i saw on a poster that she was performing at uh, industry night right with the uh, yeah. yes so yeah. so i just went to industry night mm -hmm. and watched her perform and mm -hmm. when it was over i walked up and i was like i don't know if you know me mm -hmm. um I'm a musician. And, and, and is it true that she auditioned the song for you at the car park in Yaya? It's true. It's true. She did not. <laughs> no, no. I auditioned for her. You auditioned for her, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I told her, let's, you know, let's meet and I'll play you the song. She yeah. said, sure. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, like we said, there's no flashy flashy. Yeah. So I was like, the practical answer is. You're in the car park. You just pump yeah, up your body. I was like, yeah, let's yeah. meet at Yaya. Yeah. So I was like, come down to the car park so I can play you the song. Yeah. So literally we sat in the car park at Yaya and we played her the song. She yeah. liked it. Yeah. Um, and then she went and changed it later in studio but that's where she heard the song by the way the second song we did was fire yeah. and she also heard that in the car yeah. after we had a gig at treehouse yeah. and when we were done we went out to the parking lot and i told her here's something i'm working on yeah. and i'm thinking of offering it to someone in tanzania yeah. and we and she's hearing it in the car and she started vibing to it i was like okay forget it we'll just do it with you and you know? and, and, and years later a few more awards later here we are with swahili girl yes all yeah. right tell us about that um, Swahili girl, I was in New York mm -hmm. and an Israeli friend had introduced me to Eliad, mm -hmm. who is like top five mega stars in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, in Israel, that also means a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, so he's like really hard to get to. Right. Um, and we connected and we had talked once about doing a song. He liked the idea. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I find myself alone in, in my brother's apartment in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I had just dropped my son off in college. Mm -hmm. I'm all like feeling alone, yeah. feeling... And he does music as well, right? I mean, he's also an Afrima son, Award winner because my, yeah, of uh, yeah, yeah. And the he, I mean, he, he went to Berkeley before yeah. the Army. He was in Berkeley College of Music. Yeah. Eric Wainana was the one who tested him, yeah? yeah. And uh, so he came from Kenya. And, and um, yeah, I'm all down, kind of missing my son. I wasn't going to see him for another year. Mm. So I WhatsApped Eliad and I was like, I'm alone in a kind of writing zone. Mm. And literally the guy, like, get on a WhatsApp call right mm. there, a video call. And we did a six-hour call consecutive. We broke, like, once in the middle to write something down. Mm. So he had the guitar, I was typing out words or writing them out and then typing them out. And we, I was already vibing on Swahili Girl, those kind of lyrics. Right. And I had like maybe three quarters of the lyrics already. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he just jumped on and yeah, within a month he had gone to studio with Ceylon in Israel mm -hmm. and laid down the foundation. Mm -hmm. I came a few months later and we recorded. This is 2017. Right. And we've been sitting on the song since then, mm -hmm. waiting for Eliad to come to Kenya to mm -hmm. make the video. The video yeah. Just when we thought it was going to happen, COVID happened, mm -hmm. and then nobody could travel. Right. And then I told him, look, enough, man, let's mm -hmm. just release, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. So yeah. there was no plan for the video. Mm -hmm. We released the audio, mm -hmm. it did really, it's been doing really well. well on the charts yeah. here. And, um, and then I get a call, when we realize we can't make the video, mm -hmm. I get a call from, uh, this is Kilifi, mm -hmm. a guy called Joe Kiragu, right. who is a great director and runs this is Kilifi, mm -hmm. and uh, basically said, come make the video in Kilifi, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and we'll pay for everything. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how it happened. And they mm -hmm. flew us down to Kilifi. Right. And you'll see, I mean, the video is, is, I'm in love. For me, this is the best video I've ever been involved in, mm -hmm. and I'm not in it. Yeah. You know, maybe that's why. <laughs> but I mean, the, the whole colorfulness, mm -hmm. the, we managed to really capture this mm -hmm. Swahili girl and right. Mel uh, Melissa Mwende, yeah. who plays the Swahili girl, yeah. um, just killed it completely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I'm in love with this video. People, if you look at the comments on YouTube, yeah, I mean, people, love everybody, it, people there's love not like it. one negative yeah. anything. Yeah, I, I, um, and, and that's the thing about you, you know, like you get so much massive support, and you know, people absolutely love your content. Now, unfortunately, you know, because of time, uh, we, we, we have to end uh, the interview, but mm -hmm. with the song Swahili Girl, let's do it. Uh, very quickly, tell us, like, what's next for you. There's a whole bunch of other songs mm. I'm sitting on that Valentine's, I've already recorded. Like, you, glad you've I have a, I have a Valentine's, Valentine's show in Nanyuki. Right. Uh, I'm really excited because I've never performed in Nanyuki. Okay. Um, so that's, I mean, it was like kind of first come, first serve. Yeah. And there was a couple of offers and that's what happened. So yeah. uh, I'll be performing in Nanyuki on Valentine's Day. Okay. Um, yeah, I get to go up with my wife and, and we were staying in Nanyuki, okay. singing in Nanyuki. So it'll okay. be good fun. I mean, all the best to you Thanks and your family. Thanks a lot. Thanks and a lot. of course, always amazing to have you and Thank speak you. to Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it.
Africa, you know, like you are our adopted son here in Kenya. You know, speaking of adopted son, Fred Matiangi, by any chance might Please be give watching. give this man his citizenship. Manze, the file is on his desk. Give this he man needs to sign, just sign. Sign the documents, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us here, and I think we'll end with the song Swahili Girl from Gilad Milo. And you just want to say thank you so much, of course, for, you know, being here with us. And we'll be back again next Friday to do it again right here on the Unplugged stage. Yeah. I think actually you can perform the song for us, yeah? As we play the video, <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Swahili.